afternoon. Mr. Schweitzer, and this is a quick little video here trying to get us familiar with neutralization reactions. And there's a couple, just a couple little wrinkles and things um, that you're going to want to know or things that we do occasionally, things you'll see. All right, so what is a neutralization reaction and how do I model this process? Uh, but modeling is really a fancy way of just saying, how do I show people what's happening? How do I describe it? And two main ways that we're going to describe it is with pictorials like this with a beaker. Or we'll use chemical equations to kind of show what's happening. So my first one I have here is eight hydrochloric acid is neutralized by sodium um, hydroxide. So in reality, a neutralization reaction is just sort of this ongoing fight between an acid and a base. And I might say that we know that acids, all right, plus a base, and they're going to neutralize itself and sort of knock each other out to some extent. But we're going to get way down to the nitty gritty. You could probably always describe it as just an H plus reacting with hydroxide ion and then that just forms water now it's not always as clear-cut as that as I'll point out a few little wrinkles um, but in the end even things that look a little different you might still be able to describe just like this okay so let's take our beaker here but now first of all a couple things I'm going to point out HCl is located right here why are they separated well, they're separated because this is a strong acid, and strong acids undergo hydrolysis, and that's why the acids are present, and that's why it's very product favored. So we separate them. All right, this is my base, NaOH. Why are they separated? Well, in this case, they're separated because this thing is ionic, and it's very soluble. And that's why we get these hydroxides present. Okay, um, let's just start reacting them now. Okay, again, we kind of highlight that this is the reaction that takes place. All right, so I have an eight, pour them together. The H's and the OH's bump into each other. And I sometimes circle them to know I use them over here. So let's say this guy reacts with this guy to form water. Then this guy randomly bumps into or is attracted to this guy and forms water. The rest of the guys here, it looks like there's nothing else to bump into, you know, NaCl. They do bump into each other, but their attraction um, isn't strong enough. Their positive negative charge is not strong enough though, to, to keep them together. If they kept together, they'd drop out and form a solid on the bottom, you know down here, okay, if it was strong enough attraction, but it's not, we know that NaCl is extremely soluble, and its attractions to the water molecules are much larger than to themselves, so they're just going to be considered spectator ions, and they're just going to float around in the solution like nothing has happened, you know, they're just innocent bystanders, we call them spectator ions. Okay, so how would I write out a molecular equation for this? A molecular equation treats everything as if they're molecules, uh, kind of like they're together, but they're they're really not. So this is even though this is not maybe the best way to describe it. There's a so there's a few things that aren't correct. It is the most common way people use. So it's going to be HCl plus NaOH. Will simply yield water and NaCl. Okay, what's the ionic equation? This would be simply removing the spectator ions, and it really gets down to the nitty gritty of what's happened here. So, really, an H and an OH are the ones that are reacting. Removing the spectator, removing a spectator, it's just going to be H plus. 
plus OH negative yields water. Okay. All right, so in this situation, um, what, what would happen if there's an excess of the acid or the base? First of all, this stuff here, this model, would not change. No change. Still the same process, it might just happen a little more, or it might be a little different looking here. So let's say we have an excess of this guy. So I add another H plus and add another Cl negative. Okay, how would that change here? Well, the first guy, this guy knocks out this guy to form water, this guy knocks out this guy to form water. What does this guy have to react with? Well, there's nothing there. So it just continues on this life as normal. So we'd have an H plus situation here, H plus beer, and another CL negative. Now, a few things you might note about this is that beaker before was neutral because there's no acid left, no base left. That beaker originally was neutral, but now with the excess acid, we are going to be acidic. Still acidic. Sometimes I think of these as battling armies between each other, and they're knocking each other out, but this guy has more armies, so it wins over and ends the war. Okay, so that's an example using strong acids, neutralizing each other, writing out both beakers and molecular and ionic equations. Let's try another example. All right, so this one here, I just kind of leave the beakers blank, and we'll draw some in. Lithium hydroxide reacts with nitrous acid, okay? So let's put our same beaker here. Now, lithium hydroxide, lithium hydroxide plus nitrous acid. Now, nitrous acid is HNO2. It is a weak acid. very closely related to its cousin nitric acid, which is a strong acid. But in this case, it is going to be a weak acid. So we draw it as HNO2. And I am drawing it like this on purpose. I have I'll draw three of them. Why do I draw three of them? Or why do I leave them together? Because it's weak. This reaction, nitric acid, or nitrous acid, undergoes hydrolysis. But it's very reactant favored, so we don't get very many um, actual products formed at any one given time. It's very reactant, form, very reactant um, favored. All right, lithium hydroxide, let's do this. Li plus OH negative, Li plus OH negative. All right, so in this situation, uh, they're gonna start reacting. So my molecular equation is gonna be HNO2 plus lithium hydroxide. And what are we gonna form? Now it's a common situation to call this an acid plus a base yields a salt and water. Now that's a very common, it's not always correct. It doesn't always work that way, but it's pretty, it happens a lot. So Li and the nitrous, so in this case, um, is my salt. So LiNO2, that's lithium nitrite. So those guys there are gonna be the salt, and I form water, HOH. So this hydroxide right here is gonna sort of, a, you, you think of it, attack or react with the nitrous acid here, and it's gonna grab its H. That's one way to think of it. There are a number of ways to think of this, but that's probably the most convenient way at this point. 
and it's going to form a water molecule. And the nitrite is sort of on its own. It's not, it had nothing really to do with it, but it was there. It was like at the scene of the crime, but it's, it's there now. It's on its own now. It changed. It was with this guy. Now it's on its own. All right, so this hydroxide seeks out and sort of takes out another one of these guys. And we get another of those things, H2O. All right. And we get another nitrous ion floating around. Okay. Sadly, my hydroxides have run out. This guy would be called an excess. And we'll have a lone nitrous acid floating around, as long as I keep it together. All right. So this thing is going to be likely acidic. Excess acid. And although, to be honest with you, we're not fully guaranteed that it's going to be acidic. In fact, it could be basic. So I'm going to put that on there now because I don't want to say something that would be not necessarily correct because, and I'll talk about why that is in a moment. Why is, does it have to be acidic or does it have to be basic? Okay. So we'll talk about that in just a quick moment. But either way, um, and then I have two spectra ions, lithium plus, and there we go, lithium plus. Nope, that my cation anion, cation anion, they still match up evenly. So what is my ionic equation here? What's my spectators? Things that do not change at all. Here we go. This is the ionic equation. Let's see if this makes sense to you. Okay, who's the spectator here? Okay, spectator really is just the lithium ion. This is the only spectator we have here. Even though the, the nitrite didn't do much, it was changed over the course of the reaction. So we don't include it there. Um, again, what do you do? There's an excess, well we just had an excess. And we just show it, it shows up in the beaker in the, in the end. So the question might be, is it acidic or is it basic? Okay. Now, whenever we go through a, a neutralization reaction or a chemical reaction, this is going to be, this is my acid. Okay. And this guy, what is it? We have the term called conjugate. And this guy right here is called the conjugate. base. So, in this case, and it's being a little bit beyond our course, right? so this is just, just a little bit beyond us here, is that if this is a weak acid here, then this guy is going to be a weak base. So technically, just for the letter of the law here, do we have any acids here? Yes, I circled this is, this is my acid. Do we have any bases? Technically, yes. All right, we have nitrites, and I have so I have this guy would be NH and O2, and this guy would be NO2 negative, right there. So it really depends on this two things. Review from the past depends on the strength. and the concentration. Now again, that's just a food for thought here, that are we basic, are we neutral? Well, we have excess acid left. We also have base left too. So this is this is something that we, we would we have to do further investigation to know if it's acidic or basic. Either way, that's a little bit beyond us, but that's something to think about. Okay, uh, let's go to our next slide, okay. Now, ammonia is neutralized by a small amount of hydrochloric acid. So I'm, I'm always bringing in ammonia in because ammonia is a pretty big player. It's very common um, around our environment. You, all of you have it at your house someplace in some cleaner. Uh, it's used in lots of chemical reactions. Ammonia, NH3. 
free. And it's a very calm player. Sometimes I make the analogy that even if you don't watch football, you know Aaron Rodgers. Okay? That's, that's fine. It is a known weak base. All right. She is neutralized by a small amount of hydrochloric acid. So this means I'm just saying small meaning, okay, this is my limiting reaction. So we're going to add just enough of these. Now, again, my molecular equation is just going to be that the NH3 will react with my HCl. And this is my acid, my base. So this is my acid. This is my base. And it's going to protonate that guy or give it an H+. Plus. So we get NH4+. Plus plus Cl minus. Hmm. All I did was give this guy an H plus, which is the same thing that we've been doing in a lot of reactions. Now, this is my base, and this is my, we call my conjugate acid. This is my acid, therefore this would be my conjugate base. And uh, a question you might have here is, this would be, where's the water? Unusual. So as water always requires a product? Not necessarily. In this case, we don't have it. Well, let's go ahead and draw this out here. H plus. And if you understand the idea that we're just giving an H to something, then you would realize that's okay. All right. So this H and this ammonia here react to form an H4 plus. There we go. That's it. This H plus and this ammonia here react to form an H4 plus. And what's left over? Cl minus, Cl minus, and I have two ammonias left. An H3 and an H3. All right, this is my bases. And this is technically my, my acid. Not technically, it is. And again, what's the pH of this guy? Well, it's determined by two things. My concentrations of my acids and my bases. And, um, in this case, uh, the, the strength. And... Uh, just a heads up that these guys are neutral. So the only thing we have left in this beaker, again, beyond the scope of what we're doing here, is we have equal concentrations, because I have two and two, two of these and two of these. Just comes down to strength between ammonium and ammonia. And it turns out that this NH3 is stronger, so we, this beaker will be basic. That's a, just a little bit of something to think about. Um, going forwards. All right. Um, net ionic equation here. All right. Well, what do we think that's going to be? Well, it's going to be NH3 plus H plus yields just NH4 plus. And my spectator is chloride. All right. So, pretty much covers the majority of just modeling these things out. Let them knock each other out. We have strongs, we got weaks, we got different concentrations. Thank you very much.